We shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. Through the unknown remembered gate, when the last of earth left to discover is that which was the beginning, at the source of the longest river, the voice of the hidden waterfall, and the children in the apple tree, not known because not looked for, but heard, half heard in the stillness between the two waves of the sea. Quick now, here now, always, a condition of complete simplicity, costing not less than everything, and all shall be well, and all manner of thing shall be well. When the tongues of flame are enfolded into the crowned knot of fire, and the fire and the rose are one.
O God of peace, who has taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved, in quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said, There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to them, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The tormented man appeals to Abraham from Hades. No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. Some 500 years ago, when the scriptures were translated into English, a 
peculiar word choice was made, one that reflected not the literal meaning on the page, but a theological understanding that had developed over much time. The word that we hear and that is so central to our hearing, repent or repentance, in the original Greek of Luke means a change of mind, a change of heart, a life-changing change, an enlarged perspective that means you cannot see the same thing in the same way ever again. It's one of those things that you cannot unsee once you've seen it. As a child, I stared at this black and white framed picture on my parents' bedroom wall. Some of you are familiar with this picture. It's a famous photo taken on a sunny day following a snowfall. The melting snow on the grassy bank revealed something, but I couldn't see the image in the snow melt until one day I just did. And then I could never not see it. That is metanoia, the Greek word that is translated as repentance. It is passing beyond what is known into a new perspective. And that is what Jesus invites us to be. So changed that we see the world, people, creatures, the earth, and the cosmos from such a new perspective that what results is living in another way, what he called the kingdom of God. If someone goes to my brothers from the dead, the tormented rich man said, they will change their hearts. They will live differently and not end up in torment where I am. Some literary critics have supposed that this parable gave Charles Dickens the idea for A Christmas Carol, where, of course, a stone-hearted, miserly man is visited by his late and tormented business partner in an effort to change Scrooge, to change his heart. Ebenezer means stone. To change his stone heart before it's too late. The point is the same change. The question is, in what direction shall we be changed? Jesus came to heal the human heart through the transformation of the heart. To those people who were gathered around listening to Jesus tell this parable, what was shocking was this. They knew that poor people were vile and worthless and sinners and that the rich were rich because of their virtue, because of God's favor. The poor are cursed and the rich are blessed. That is what they knew. They knew this to be true because everyone believed it. So Jesus tells parables with a shocking twist at the end a familiar story that everyone knows the punchline, and then he does something so weird at the end that everyone is left wondering, wondering what did he really mean? And they can't stop wondering. They haven't quite seen what's in the picture yet, but they're trying. The question, I believe, at the end of a parable at the end of any teaching for us today is always so what or so that. No one here is tonight because you had to be here. Obviously with the storm that's even more true. I don't know why you specifically are here but there's something about this worship or this place this experience that feeds or touches you in a way that is good and life-giving.
Jesus lived and loved and laughed and cried and told these stories for us to hear in places like this to draw people into a life-giving change of heart and mind, an awakening, a metanoia, into a life of seeing the world as overflowing with sacredness and divine love, and to live in a world, in the world, from that frame of mind, from that frame of heart. You and I are still waking up to the truth of Christianity. It is not only what it has been for these last 2,000 years. It is only now awakening and becoming what it always has meant to be. We are still learning to see people who are different than I am as myself. That's a tongue-twisting phrase. Love your neighbor as yourself. But the way that this is now taught by some... For me, the wisdom teacher, Cynthia Bourgeau, she frames this not as an equivalent statement, where I love you as much as I love myself, but rather it's what, what if it's what if, what if it is that I am to love and care for you as if you were myself. That is a radical leap of consciousness to see beyond the boundaries that separate us from one another and that separate the inner self, the inner egoic boundaries that we have to see and transform and heal. I imagine that's why we're all here for some slightly related way that we're drinking some kind of a healing draft. And people who drink that drink, the healing waters, gather in peace and welcome. We dare to see one another and become more fully human as Jesus was fully human. We call that church.
Let us pray for ourselves and the world. Loving God, enliven the church for its mission. Breathe fresh life into your people. Creator of all, lead us and every people into the ways of justice and peace. Awaken in us a sense of wonder for the earth and all that is in it. God of truth, inspire with your wisdom those whose decisions affect the lives of others. Give grace to all those whose lives are linked with ours. Let us now name before God those for whom we offer our personal prayers, remembering especially all who suffer from violence and every shade of oppression. We pray for all who mourn and for those who have died, especially Ann Cockrell, Doris Taylor, and Charlotte Ivy. Lord, you have called us to serve you. Grant that we may walk in your presence, your love in our hearts, your truth in our minds, your strength in our wills, until at the end of our journey, we know the joy of our homecoming and the welcome of your embrace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who need no repentance. Amen. Amen. May Christ, the Good Shepherd, bind us with a bond of love that cannot be broken. My sisters and brothers, the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Good evening. Peace to you. My name is Kate Anthony. I am one of the associate priests here at St. Stephen's, and it is a joy to be with you this evening. It probably, I, I imagine for many of you, you come every week. For me, it has been a while, and I am glad to be here. I missed this space. I have a few announcements. Um, I want to point out two opportunities for connection that are coming up in the next few weeks. The first is on Thursday of this week at 5.30 here. There is a newcomer's reception. We are defining newcomer very loosely in this time. It is still um, a season of coming back or discovering what life is now. And if you are new here or if you have been away for some time and would just like to get reconnected back into this community, please come. There is information in the spirit, which is this, um, for you to read more and to RSVP. So I hope that you'll join us if you feel new in any way. And also, if you identify as a young adult, another loosely defined term in the Episcopal Church, young adult broadly is like 22 to 45 in the Episcopal Church, but I think of it more as a life stage, and I think when you are a young adult, you know that you are. And so if you are, please come to a kickoff event on the 4th at Mainline Brewery, a chance to sort of meet one another, um, folks in an affinity moment of life, and kick off a new uh, chapter of the young adults ministry at St. Stephen's. And if you know a young adult, um, invite them. It will be fun, no pressure, just a nice time. In terms of no pressure, nice times, there's dinner after this service in the building just, just to this side of us. I'll invite you, please, to join us. It is donation-based. If you are able, please give generously. If you have no money, please come anyway and let us feed you, um, both literally and in terms of uh, friendships that you will form during that time. I'll invite you to leave through any of the back exits if you want to come over to the dinner because uh, from the time of communion and onward, the healing prayer ministers and anointing ministers will be in both of the chapels, and they will continue offering healing prayer and anointing through the end of the service as long as folks uh, need them to, and so we try to hold those spaces as holy and set apart. So when you're exiting, if you'll exit toward the back and come over for dinner, make a friend, and enjoy what smelled to be delicious food. 
we are about to turn toward the Lord's table and have Eucharist together, all are welcome to receive at this table, no matter where you are today in your hearts, no matter where you've come from or where you identify in the journey of faith, you're welcome here and you're welcome to receive. When the time comes, Bill and I will come and stand, I always hit this, at the bottom of the steps and you are welcome to come up. We have uh, regular wafers and gluten-free. On each side of us, there will be a chalice for sipping And at each of the columns, there will be an intinction cup if you prefer to dip. So all of those are open to you. You can simply receive the bread if that is your preference. And you can also just come up and receive a blessing. And to let Bill and I know that that's what you would like, just cross your arms over your chest. If you, for any reason, cannot come forward, please just let someone near you know, and we'll come back to you. This table is open, and we will bring it to you if we need to. Again, we're so grateful that you're here. This is a new season in the life of St. Stephen's, and it's very exciting. And it's especially exciting just to continue to grow in relationship with one another. I think that's the best part, for me at least. And I hope that you will discover ways in this season to keep deepening your relationships with the people in the pews around you and with God. And however we can help you in that, we would like to do so. My friends, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord is with us. God's spirit is here. Look with kindness, O God, on your people gathered here before you. We praise you for the prophets who, in spite of persecution, spoke your challenging word. We praise you that in Christ you chose to be born in a stable and revealed to poor shepherds. We praise you for Mary Magdalene, first witness of the resurrection, and for all the women and men who have been trusted and empowered by you. With all the unremembered, outcast, with the poor and needy, with the trusting and hopeful in all the ages, we lift our voices to magnify you as we sing. Loving God, you are always thinking about your people. You never forget us. You sent your Son, Jesus, who gave his life for us and who came to forgive us and taught us to forgive each other. On the very night he was betrayed, Jesus gathered his friends, took bread, and said the blessing. He broke it and gave it to them saying, Take and eat. This is my own body given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, This is my lifeblood poured in for you. Do this to remember me. So we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send your spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ in whom we have become your own. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you as our God and Creator in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen.
This is the table not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed. Come because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here.
Let us pray. God of glory, you nourish us with bread from heaven. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that through us the light of your glory may shine in all the world. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We know we shall pass this way but once. If there is any kindness we can show or any good thing we can do, let us do it now. Let us not defer it or neglect it, for we shall not pass this way again. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be on you and remain with you always. Amen. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor everyone. Love and serve God rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. <laughs> 